And now, before we do go to the Lord's table, our Bishop Mary Ann uh, will speak to us um, on matters of importance regarding the Anglican Communion and the Episcopal Church. Good morning, everyone. Um, before I address you on the, uh, the issues of the Anglican Communion, I would like to, on behalf of all of you, give great thanks to the Congresswoman for her wonderful words to us and for the Imam and the former mayor for praying us through those beautiful prayers. We are so honored by your presence with us today on this most auspicious day. And in this week, if you have been um, following the news of our church, uh, because of the a meeting of the primates of the Anglican Communion, which are the head bishops of every province and country of the Anglican Church, a light has shined on the Episcopal Church. And uh, in particular, decisions that we made last summer at our general convention regarding our understanding of the sacrament of marriage as being a sacrament that is available to all Christians, all in our church, regardless of their sexual orientation. Uh, this was not a decision that we as a church came to lightly, but one that was the result of over 40 years of deep study, biblical reflection, conversation, and insights gathered from our people. As our presiding bishop said um, in his words to the primates, this was not, this was a decision based on our understanding of the meaning of Jesus's uh, hands stretched out upon the cross, a sign of God's love for all people. Uh, the majority of the Anglican primates did not agree with our decision and as a result have issued sanctions, some sanctions against our Anglican, our Episcopal leaders in certain areas of governance of the wider communion. I'd like to say simply two things about that. Uh, first of all, this does not come as a surprise to us. We knew, uh, based on conversations we had had with our brothers and sisters across the church, that some sanctions of some kind would be forthcoming, and, and we understand and accept that. Um, it will not, the sanctions will not change the direction and the decisions the Episcopal Church have, has made. And that is simply because the, while not every Episcopalian agrees with decisions made at General Convention, this is a broad and deep consensus, reflecting, as I said before, so much deep conversation, prayer, and study. And just as our position on the role of women in leadership in the church, just as our position on the full inclusion of divorced persons in our church, other issues where we have disagreement across the communion, our position is strong and confident and clear. People have asked me if this in some ways changes our place or our relationship to others in the communion, if we feel any less a part of the Anglican communion, and the answer is certainly not. Because the Anglican communion is not defined by decisions made by the hierarchy. The Anglican communion is in fact a broad and deep network of relationships, congregations, dioceses, people who have served in common mission across the world. And those relationships remain strong and we will continue. And we will continue to be present, as our presiding bishop said, in every dimension of the communion to which we are invited. Um, united as brothers and sisters in the faith, but also confident of the revelations that God, we believe God has given us. And so we continue. And I, and I am grateful to continue with all of you. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and great sacrifice to God. Thank you. 